What percentage of all crimes do you think are related to car theft? 5%? 10%? Wrong. In fact, figures recently issued show that theft from cars, or the theft of the cars themselves, make up a staggering 25% of all reported crime. Nearly half a million cars are stolen in England each year, and a quarter of these are never recovered. To the average person, their most prized possession is their car. And if it's taken away from them, even for a short time, not only does it mean they have also lost their independence, but they soon discover that they're in for a lot of frustration, aggravation, inconvenience, and a lightning of the wallet, while insurance companies and repairers go through the ritual dance of making a drama out of a crisis. Some car thieves are professionals, but many are opportunists. Unskilled, petty criminals, often under the age of 20, out for a thrill or just trying to impress their friends. In all cases, the result is either the loss of the car altogether, a burnt out or smashed right off, or at the very least a damaged or vandalized vehicle which will never be the same again in the eyes of its owner. Rover have been very conscious of the problem for some time and we have been striving and will continue to strive to make our cars more and more secure and therefore less accessible to the thief. Let's first remind ourselves of the types of security systems fitted to our vehicles and the vehicles to which they are fitted and then we'll look at them in more detail. First, there is perimetric security. This is the means of alarming all the opening panels, in other words, the doors, bonnet and boot or tailgate against unauthorized entry. All our Rover cars now have perimetric protection. Next, volumetric security. A sensor like this one on the new 400 at the top of the B post radiates ultrasonic waves which bounce around inside the vehicle to detect any air disturbance. Of course it does mean that you can't leave your children or your dog in the car if volumetric protection is activated and you must make sure all the windows and sunroof are fully closed or a passing vehicle could trigger it. In addition to the new 400, volumetric security is also fitted as standard on the 600 and the 800 and on 200 coupes. It's fitted on cabriolets too, but it's a different type of sensor and it's mounted behind the fascia. Now engine immobilization, which is fitted in various forms across the range. Previously we had systems on most models which isolated the starter motor circuit when a vehicle's security system was armed. But now, with the introduction of electronic engine management systems, like MEMS, we are progressively introducing more sophisticated engine immobilization systems to defeat even the most ardent car thief. Engine immobilization is currently achieved in one of two ways. On some models, we fit this electronic unit, called a 3TH, or Spider. It is connected in the electrical circuits to key engine components, such as the starter solenoid, fuel pump, and main relay on PGM FI vehicles and the fuel cutoff solenoid on diesel engines. When the alarm ECU is disarmed, it signals the spider unit to connect all the relevant circuits so the engine can be started. The second system is being progressively introduced on petrol engine vehicles fitted with MEMS engine management. It's an electronic immobilization system which totally immobilizes the MEMS ECU. When the alarm is disarmed, a signal is sent to the MEMS ECU to allow the engine to be started. Incidentally, the alarm ECU and the MEMS ECU are a matched pair, and individual units can only be changed by using Testbook to reprogram the MEMS ECU. On cars with central door locking, except the Rover 100, there are two ways of arming the security system, by using the key in the driver's door lock or by using the remote handset. As we'll see in a minute, the handset provides the more secure means of arming the vehicle. There are two types of handset in use, an infrared handset, which has an emitter in the end, and a radio frequency handset. 600 models use an infrared handset, which puts out a fairly narrow beam, so the handset must be pointed in the direction of a receiver unit mounted above the rear view mirror. Press the signal button once to arm and press it again to disarm. The 800 also has an infrared handset, but it has two buttons, one to arm and the other to disarm. All the other models use an RF handset, which operates to a radio frequency of about 433 megahertz. It's omnidirectional, so it doesn't have to be pointed, 
and its signal is picked up by an aerial which is taped into the wiring harness. Press the button with the dimples or padlock symbol on it to arm the security system and the plane button to unlock. Of course, on models without central door locking, which includes the Mini and some Rover 100s and 200s, the doors have to be locked manually and the handset is needed to arm the security system. Then there is a recent security development which is progressively being incorporated. It's called passive immobilization and is fitted to the Mini, the Rover 100, the 200 and the new 400. In practical terms, it means that when the ignition switch is turned off and the driver's door is opened, the system automatically immobilizes the engine about 30 seconds later. After that time, the handset must be used to remobilize it. So now let's look at these systems in more detail, and in particular, how they apply to the latest model in our range, the new Rover 400. The major components involved in the security system are these. First, the volumetric sensor we saw earlier. It's located at the top of the right-hand B-post to sense glass breakage and air movement. And then there are these door switches to signal if any of the doors are open. The sill LEDs, which flash to show when the system is armed. And the tailgate lock and catch switches to both lock the tailgate and to signal the alarm ECU when it's open. The alarm ECU, which is mounted behind the center console. The horn the combined bonnet catch and switch, and last but not least, the remote handset. Let's see where these components are located on the car itself. The volumetric sensor, the tailgate lock and catch switches, the door switches on all four doors, and front door sill assemblies incorporating an indicator light LED. It's called a Confidence Confirmed Telltale, or CCT for short. Then there is the alarm ECU, the horn, and the combined bonnet catch and switch to secure the bonnet and to signal the ECU when it's open. There are two ways of locking the car, either by using the key in the driver's door or using the handset. If the key is used, the doors, bonnet and tailgate will be locked, the perimetric alarm system armed and the engine immobilized, but there will be no volumetric protection. For extra security when you're not leaving the family pet in the car, use the RF remote handset instead of the key, because this will provide volumetric protection too, against entry through a broken window or the sunroof for example. As soon as the alarm has been armed, using the key or the handset, the hazard lights will flash three times and the door sill LEDs will flash rapidly for ten seconds, then change to a slower flash rate which will continue until the system is disarmed. If the system detects a mislock, for example the bonnet or one of the doors isn't properly closed, the hazard lights won't flash and the LEDs won't give their fast flash, but will still give the slow flash signal 10 seconds later to indicate that partial arming, that is perimetric and engine immobilization only, has taken place. Incidentally, during the time the system is armed, it's okay to open the tailgate or boot by using the key. It won't trigger the alarm. The rest of the car is still protected, and when the tailgate is closed, the system automatically returns to its original armed condition. To unlock, you can use the key, which will disarm the alarm and unlock the doors, and the hazards will flash once, but the engine will still be immobilized, so you won't be able to start it. In this condition, the sill LEDs will come on continuously when the driver's door is opened. When the ignition is turned on, a warning bleeper will sound. If that happens, simply press either button on the handset to remobilize the engine. If you want to unlock, disarm and remobilize the engine all in one operation, you've got to use the handset. The hazard lights will flash once, the LEDs will go out and the engine will start. As we just said, the handset must be used to fully disarm and remobilize. So what happens if the handset is lost after arming, or fails to work for some reason? The driver can then use the key to enter a code called the Emergency Key Access Code, or EKA for short. This four-digit code is given to the customer on the security card provided with the vehicle. The code number is entered using the key in the driver's door lock, and on this new 400 all the doors must be closed and locked. You then enter the key code like this. As you saw just now, the code for the car you're working on is 3, 2, 
one, four. Turn the key towards the unlock position three times to enter the first digit of the code. Then turn it to the lock position twice to enter the second digit. To the unlock position once for the third digit and to the lock position four times for the fourth digit. Then turn it to the unlock position. If you've done it right, the LED indicators will stop flashing and you'll be able to start the engine. If you've got it wrong, the horn will sound a beep when you turn the key to the final unlock position and the LEDs will continue to flash. You can then have up to two more attempts to enter the code before the system enters a 10 minute lockout. Incidentally, if you think you've gone wrong during the code entry, simply open, close and relock the door to cancel what you've already entered and start again. By the way, if the engine immobilizer has been deactivated by entering the code, it will then stay inactive until the handset is next used to lock the car. One final point about locking the new 400. Any door can be locked from the inside using the sill button and the driver's sill button will lock all the doors via the central locking system. But the alarm system won't be activated. The car can be driven as normal. In a severe collision, this inertia switch will operate to unlock the doors automatically and break the supply to the fuel pump relay so the pump will stop. Now let's have a look at the passive immobilization on the new 400. It's a system to immobilize the engine even if the driver forgets to lock the car. What happens is that when the driver switches off and opens the door, the passive system is triggered. 30 seconds later, the engine is immobilized automatically and the sill LEDs will start to flash. The engine can only be remobilized when the driver returns by pressing either button on the handset. If he or she forgets and tries to start the car, the warning buzzer will sound to remind them. Incidentally, the sill LED will have stayed on when the driver's door was opened. The battery in the handset has a long life, but eventually will have to be changed. When it starts to go flat, the sill LEDs will flash rapidly whenever the handset is used to disarm, until the door is opened. The driver may also notice that the operating range of the handset is reduced. To change the battery, carefully prise the handset apart like this, ensuring you don't damage the seal between the two halves. Slide the old battery out of its clip, making sure you don't touch or bend the clip, and take care not to touch the surface of the clip or the circuit board itself. Even moisture from the fingers can affect the durability of the handset. Now, with the battery out, hold down each button in turn for at least five seconds to discharge any residual power. You must fit the correctly specified battery, a Panasonic CR2032. Carefully slide it into the clip without touching the flat surfaces of the battery and making sure the positive side is facing up. Then snap the two halves of the handset together. If the car is locked, unlock it using the key. Then press the lock button on the handset at least four times near the car to synchronize it to the alarm ECU. The handset is now ready to use. Incidentally, the handset and the alarm ECU communicate using a sequence of codes called a rolling code, which is unique and known only to them. If the driver loses or damages a handset supplied with the car, you have to reprogram the ECU with test book to accept the replacement before it can be used. If the handset fails to operate at any time, it may be because it is out of sync with the alarm ECU, or maybe because the vehicle battery has been disconnected. Press the lock button four times to resynchronize the rolling code, and then try it again. If it still fails to unlock, then unlock using the key. All the doors should then unlock, the hazard light should give one long flash, and the door sill LEDs should stop flashing. If only the driver's door unlocks, this indicates that the car battery may be flat, or that there is a fault somewhere in the security system. So you'll need test book to track down the problem. If test book is not available for some reason, there is an inbuilt test procedure you can use to check if the system is working correctly or not. You do it like this. First, lower the driver's window. You'll need to reach in to turn the ignition switch in a moment. Then check that the alarm is disarmed, the vehicle unlocked, and the ignition off. Now you have to enter the diagnostic mode, and be warned, you only have about two seconds to do it. Start by locking the driver's door using the sill button, then turn the ignition on, off, 
and on again. Finally, unlock the door with the sill button. If you've done it right, and within the two-second time scale, the horn will beep, as you heard just now. Now test the system parametrically like this and watch the LEDs, because for each of the following operations, they should flash once if that part of the system is operating correctly. Open and close the driver's door, each passenger door, then the boot or tailgate, and the bonnet. Lift the driver's sill button and push it down, and do the same with the passenger door sill button. Then operate the keys in the driver's and front passenger's door. Next, you can check the volumetric security. The ignition key should still be on. Operate the unlock button on the handset and then create some movement inside the car and watch the LEDs. They should flash once. If everything has checked out correctly, you will know the security system is OK. You'll come out of the diagnostic mode when you turn off the ignition. That completes the new 400 security system, so let's summarize what it's got. Parametric security to protect all the opening panels, volumetric security to protect the vehicle interior, and engine immobilization. And to ensure total arming, you must use the handset. Then in addition, there is passive engine immobilization to protect against the driver who forgets to lock the car. The engine can only be remobilized by using the handset. And don't forget, if you've disconnected the vehicle battery at any time, you'll have to resynchronize both handsets. For the rest of this program, we'll look at some of the differences in the security systems fitted to other models in the range. We'll start with the 1995 200. On 200s without central locking, obviously the doors can only be locked using the sill buttons and the key. These cars have a perimetric alarm system with engine immobilization, which is activated using an RF handset. 200s with central locking have the same protection as the new 400. Perimetric, volumetric, and engine immobilization, and the system works in a similar way. One small difference is that the hazards don't flash when you arm the 200 alarm system. The key will lock, arm, and immobilize everything except volumetric protection while the handset does the lot. If the key is used to unlock and disarm, it won't remobilize the engine. The handset must be used to do this. Incidentally, on 200s, the CCT indicator LED is on the instrument panel, but its signal flashes are the same as the new 400. The procedure for entering the emergency key code is the same as the new 400, and you change the battery in the handset in the same way. Don't forget to resynchronize the handset by pressing the lock button four times after unlocking the car with the key. Passive immobilization has recently been introduced on the 200, and it works just like the new 400. It's activated 30 seconds after the ignition has been turned off and the driver's door opened. The handset must be used to remobilize the engine. Next, we'll have a look at the 1995-600. Just like the 200 and the new 400, it has perimetric, volumetric, and engine immobilization protection, but doesn't have passive immobilization yet. Locking and unlocking is done in a similar way, the handset providing the most secure method, and is also the only means of remobilizing the engine when unlocking. As we said earlier, the 600 has an infrared handset with a single button and must be pointed towards its receiver inside the car, ideally from less than six meters away. A difference to the system is that if the handset is used to lock and the key to unlock, the alarm will be disarmed except the bonnet. The engine will still be immobilized. And although the driver's door will unlock, the central door locking system will be put out of action. When the door is opened, the sill LED continues to flash and if an attempt is made to start the engine, the alarm horn will sound a single beep. The LEDs are next to the door sill buttons, like the new 400, and work in a similar way. The hazard lights will flash three times, and the LEDs will flash slowly while the system is arming itself and change to a faster rate after 15 seconds. If they don't give the initial slow flash, this indicates a mislock. One of the doors, bonnet or boot is not properly closed. When you disarm, the hazards will flash once and the sill LEDs will go out. The handset has two batteries, and if they are getting low, the red LED in the handset won't flash when it's used. To change the batteries, you must use the correct ones, Unipart CWF 100010, 
and fit them with the positive side of both facing downwards. You don't have to resynchronize the handset on the 600. If the handset is lost after arming the system or fails to function for some reason, the emergency key access code can be entered like the new 400. You use the key in the driver's door lock, but the start point is different. The door must be unlocked and open, then enter the code as before. When you've done it right, the LEDs will stop flashing and the engine will start. If you've got it wrong, the alarm horn will sound a warning beep. You can have two more attempts. If you're still wrong, the system is inhibited and you'll have to wait for 10 minutes before you can try again. Of course, you can also use Testbook to interrogate the system if the code security card is missing. Testbook is essential to the diagnosis of problems. And if you are looking for the alarm ECU, it's here on the right-hand side of the luggage compartment behind the trim. Now, the 800. There are similarities to the 600, but the 800 has some additional features, such as lazy locking, which we'll look at in a minute. It has an infrared handset and parametric, volumetric and engine immobilization, just like the 600. And the handset and key are used in the same way too. The handset must be used to remobilize when unlocking. This time the CCT indicator light is here in the fascia switch panel. When the system is armed, the car's interior lights will flash twice and the LED will flash rapidly for eight seconds to confirm a successful arming. After that, the LED slows to flash once a second. If the alarm bleeps while arming, this indicates that one of the doors, bonnet or boot lid is not properly closed. The doors can also be locked from inside using the driver's door sill button. A sudden impact of the car will make this inertia switch operate and unlock the doors. It also cuts off the fuel pump. Reset the switch by pressing the rubber top down. If you have to enter the emergency key access code, do it with the driver's door closed and enter the code as before. The LED will then stop flashing and the engine can be started. If it's wrong, the alarm will sound a bleep and you will have to try again. If you notice you have made a mistake while you are entering the code, open and close the door to cancel your entry so far and start again. The handset has two batteries and the LED will flash if they are going flat, just like the 600. When you change them, the correct batteries are Unipart YWK1003 and are fitted side by side. Take care to fit them the correct way round. Look for the positive and negative marks in the housing and fit them as you see here. Now, lazy locking. This is to automatically close any open windows or the sunroof when locking the car. When you use the handset to lock, continue to hold the button down. After two seconds, the handset LED will flash more rapidly and continue to flash until the sunroof and windows are closed. If you release the button before they are all closed, a warning bleep will sound and the volumetric protection system will not be activated. Incidentally, you can use the key in a similar way. Just continue to hold the key in the locked position. On the 800, the alarm ECU is integral with the central control unit, or CCU, which is located behind the fuse box in the driver's footwell. Fault diagnosis is done using microcheck or test book. And if you have to change either the CCU or the MEMS ECU, you'll have to match the ECU to the CCU code using microcheck or test book. Don't forget there is a self-test procedure on the ECU if you don't have any other means of testing it. You'll find the details in the workshop manual. Finally in this video, let's have a quick look at the 1995 Mini and Rover 100 systems. As you know, the Mini has a mechanical door locking system, whereas the 100 may have mechanical door locking or central locking. In either case, an RF handset is provided to arm and disarm the alarm system. It includes parametric arming and engine immobilization and volumetric on cabriolets. All models have switches on the doors, bonnet and boot to sense a mislock or illegal opening. The fascia indicator light LED will flash rapidly for 8 to 10 seconds during arming and then change to a slower rate. The hazard lights will flash three times. 
If someone should attempt to tamper with the car while it's armed, the alarm will sound for 30 seconds. But in addition, the LED will flash rapidly until the ignition is switched on to advise the driver that the vehicle has been tampered with. You'll find the same tamper feature on other models. Incidentally, on Minis and Rover 100s, fitted with mechanical door locking, there is no emergency key access code procedure. So if the handset is missing, you'll need Testbook to disarm the system and remobilize the engine. The handset battery is a Unipart YWK1003. Because it is an RF system, like the 200 and the new 400, you must resynchronize when you change it by pressing the lock button four times in quick succession. As we said before, the 1995 Mini and the Rover 100 are both fitted with passive immobilization systems, like the 200 and the new 400. 30 seconds after you switch off and open the door, the engine is immobilized and can only be started after using the handset to remobilize. If you are doing some diagnosis and rectification work, you will need to know where things are. On this Rover 100, the alarm ECU is under the fascia on the left-hand side. And the diagnostic port for test book or microcheck is here under bonnet, not far from the bonnet open switch. If for some reason you are unable to carry out a full diagnosis with test book or microcheck, there is a self-test mode for cars with central door locking. It's activated just as we showed you earlier for the new 400. That completes this program on 1995 security. So let's try to summarize what we've been saying. Perimetric takes care of the bits that open, doors, tailgate and bonnet, while volumetric looks for anything that stirs the air inside the vehicle. Immobilization means the engine won't start and run and passive immobilization takes care of the driver who forgets to lock the vehicle when he gets out. The only way to fully secure the car is by using the handset. And in any case, it must always be used to disarm, otherwise the engine won't start. This program has examined the security systems fitted to the Rover range and has highlighted the main differences from model to model to help you answer customers' queries. It may not be easy for you to remember them all, but don't forget there are many other sources of information to help you. Workshop manuals, correspondence courses, technical information bulletins, and of course, the owner's handbooks. The systems may seem complicated, but they need to be to deter today's thieves. But if they are understood and used correctly, they can play a major part in preventing car crime.